of Tuolo with Guardian Legend 100%. Hey, so yeah, my name is Tuolo. Uh, we're going to be running Guardian Legend today. Uh, this is a pretty long game, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get right into it, and then we'll talk where we're going. Uh, so time is going to start when I hit new game here. So we'll go ahead in three, two, two one, one, go! go. Good luck to all. Thanks. Uh, so this is a uh, NES game made in 1998, uh, or 1988, sorry. Uh, it is a combination scroller and action adventure. It's got the nice variety of gameplay. It does. It's a pretty unique game. So we're just going through this first little section here. It's kind of like our approach to uh, the rest of the game. And the big thing on this level is we're trying to avoid those, uh, those little discs. Uh, later in the game, they're not much of a threat, but right now they will destroy me. What are the requirements for 100%? That might be a good thing to get out of the way right uh, now. Yeah, good call. Um, so 100% in this game, um, the most important thing is that there are 20 corridors through the game, which are these auto-scrolling sections. Uh, you have to do all 20 of them. Um, you also have to get all the sub-weapons and level them up to level 3. Uh, you have to get all your defensive and offensive upgrades, and you have to get all the red and blue landers, and I'll describe landers in a minute. So this is the first boss. This is the defense grid. Pretty standard bullet hell boss here. I'm um, being a little bit safe. Nicely done. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do over here is get this auto shot upgrade so that I can stop button mashing. Yeah, you were hammering on that, uh, that B button for the first little bit there. Yeah, <laughs> it's always fun right at the start of this game. Um, faster strat is usually to skip that. Uh, and then you pick it up later, so you end up button mashing through the first little bit of the game. Uh, I'm planning on making this a little easier on myself. Good call. So this is the boss room. We're just going to skip it. We're going to skip that one like four times over the course of the run. We never fight that boss. It's also pretty neat just that you go through that first auto-scroller, kind of like space shooter sequence, and then suddenly the game drops you into a... Essentially, kind of like a Legend of Zelda style exploration section. Yep. Uh, so this is Corridor 1. Uh, one thing you might have missed if you weren't paying attention is when I walked into the corridor, I started shooting the door. Uh, in this game, corridors 1 through 10, uh, with the exception of 9, you have to do something special to get the door to open. So in Corridor 1 there, we just have to blast at it for a second. Um, in the any percent category of this game, um, you have to do corridors 1 through 10. Uh, corridors 1 through 10 are what activate the uh, kill switch to blow up this planet. Uh, the story of this game is that Naju, this planet, is sent hurtling toward Earth by uh, an alien civilization, and you, the Guardian, have to come in here and stop it. Um, so corridors 1 through 10 kind of unlock the final area of the game and let you activate the self-destruct sequence. Uh, 11 through 20 are optional and just have upgrades, but obviously in the 100% category we have to do those. One other thing to watch out for in this game, and I think it's very fitting that this game is being showcased uh, at the Midwest Speed Fest event being run during VGM Con, but uh, this is kind of a late generation NES game, and it has really good music for the console. Oh, I love the soundtrack in this game so much. So this, this is the first corridor. Uh, it's probably one of the longest ones. Um, not very difficult, just kind of getting you used to, to what's going on. Lots of breaks in here. So 
So one thing you'll notice as we go through the game too is it's divided into like five kind of biomes. Um, so we have the sea biome right here. This is the first one. Um, then we're going to go into the forest, uh, then crystal, then bio, which is a little gross, but it's fun. Um, and then the desert is the last one. You kind of see like themed enemies in the different biomes too. Yeah. Lots of seahorses and flying fish in this one. Although the bosses are not necessarily sorted by biome, really, are they? Uh, not really. Um, yeah, Philippa, you really only see in the in the sea, see in the sea, because um, he's a giant one-eyed fish. But yeah, other than that, it kind of bounces around a little bit. So one kind of a fun thing, like a story I always like to tell about this game, and you'll kind of see as we go through, but for some reason this isn't one of the more widely known uh, NES games, which is sad because it's really good, but I must have rented this at some point when I was a kid um, from our local Blockbuster competitor and didn't remember what it was, forgot about it. Years later, I was like, hey, do you remember that game that's like a combination of a shooter and a Zelda thing and all the stuff and I was describing people going, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was one of those people. Yeah, and so I finally like... I started thinking maybe it was a fever dream and I made it up and I finally wrote a letter to Nintendo Power. I was like, what is this game? By the way, I'm old enough for Nintendo Power, so there you go. And writing letters, apparently. I know, right? <laughs> um, and they're like, oh, you mean Guardian Legend? I was like, yes, thank you. It doesn't help that the cover art for this game is incredibly, like, non-descriptive. Oh, also, yeah. it's just one of those games. All right. Well, you got a corridor down. Good job. One corridor down. Many, many to go. <laughs> so, as you can tell, like a lot of this game is auto scroller. Um, you you can't really control the speed, um, and there's not a lot of glitches or hacks that we use in this game to get through it. Um, so, running this game fast is really just knowing your route, running it as tightly as possible, um, killing the bosses as fast as possible, and not dying. Um, I'll kind of show you, um, in a, I'm going to get a quick exit here. Um, I'll show you a little bit later when I go into a save room, but there's checkpoint rooms throughout the game. Uh, and if you die in this game, there's no like life system. You don't, you know, automatically just pick up where you left off. It's an automatic game over and you get sent back to the last checkpoint room you were in, um, which is in the maze somewhere. Uh, and then you have to, you know, just resume from there. So if you die on, a, especially on a boss in a corridor, uh, you have to run back to the corridor, go all the way back through the corridor. Oh my God, my menu is terrible right now. Uh, and then try the boss again. So deaths in this game can cost you anywhere from like a minute and a half to five minutes, depending on where you die. It's terrible. So I have enough time built in my estimate for about three deaths, as long as I don't take any really bad ones. Uh, I'm hoping that's all I need. There's some pretty scary bosses in this game too, but you're gonna do great. So this game has like a really interesting, it has a couple interesting systems. You've got weapons and sub weapons, but um, it's also got this really interesting um, currency system uh, that are called chips. So if you look at Tuolo's screen, there's a, a counter there that says chip 76. Um, chips are a combination currency, and they also power up your sub weapons. Yeah, and they also dictate how powerful your primary weapon is. So you can see right now I'm shooting one shot. Um, and as soon as I get a red chip here, and I really hope, here's one, this will be it. Uh, so now, now I'm shooting three. Because you got to 100, it's yeah. like a threshold-based system, yeah. So a, a lot of the routing and the, I guess, maybe theory crafting, we'll call it around this game, has been to, uh, with consideration for that chip count, because you need to buy certain things at certain times, you need certain sub-weapons to get through certain levels. Um, and then when you don't need it, you just kind of want to have it maxed out so that you get the best possible primary weapon that you can have, so. Yeah. Okay, so second boss here, this is going to be uh, Blue Optimum. Blue? Green? 
green. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so this guy's not too bad, although I'm already a little bit off rhythm. The big thing I'm doing on this guy is trying to avoid those uh, seaweed tendrils he's dropping because those will knock off about three health bars per. And I'm definitely playing this guy safe. I could be way more aggressive, but... That should be it. Yep. Looks pretty good to me. There's also, um, you, you told me about this when you were doing some practice this week. You're actually skipping some animations in and out of the corridors as well, right? Yeah, so you can, you, you see it flash on the screen briefly, but if you hold select as you're going in and out of the corridors, it kind of skips that animation. So when you see this, like me, pause and unpause the game really quick. Um, give me just a second, because this one is a little bit tricky. Sure. Um... I'm basically pausing and unpausing the game real quick so that I can hold select and skip that animation. So now we're going to go ahead and do a death warp back to the beginning because we're done with this section of the game. So we go back to our last checkpoint room, which was our starting room in this case, and off to the next session of Labyrinth. Skip this boss room again. curious with that um, that kind of fever dream idea that you were talking about earlier to all. I'm really curious if anybody in chat or anybody who maybe wants to throw in a donation uh, and tell us about the game that you <laughs> swear you remembered playing as a kid, but you could never find it as an adult, because I think a lot of people have a game like that, actually. Speaking of donations, mind if I sneak one in? Go for it. We got some time. All right. I got a $3 donation from Non-Binary Code. This is Dono for that soundtrack. And I have to concur. It's good stuff. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Appropriate that for Save the Music, we're playing a game with such a great soundtrack. Exactly. Um, so another system in this game, and it's not really important now, but it'll come into play later, so I'll kind of touch on it. Um, you'll see these items being dropped, and the item drops in this game are fairly generous. Um, it doesn't get too dangerous until you're about halfway through, but they follow a, uh, a very distinct pattern. Um, so there's, there's an eight drop rotation in this game, um, and it goes red chip, blue chip, or sorry, heart, red chip, blue chip, heart, heart, red chip, red chip, and then an eighth drop. Um, and at the beginning of the game here, the eighth drop is always an energy tank. Um, it'll refill my health completely. Uh, later in the game, we get a weapon called the Enemy Eraser. Um, it is the only sub weapon in the game not on the chip system. Uh, it has its own ammo. And once we pick that up, the eighth drop starts a four drop rotation of its own that goes red chip, health tank, health tank, um, Enemy Eraser ammo. So this is Red Philippa. This is the last time we'll see Philippa until the boss rush at the end of the game, and he's gone. Very good fight. What's the difference between a red chip and a blue chip? Uh, so the red chips restore um, five health units, or five shield units, and I think um, 500 chips? I don't remember exactly. I think it's 500. Uh, the blue chips restore 50 chips and one health unit, so they're just significantly weaker. Okay. So you want red? You want red. Okay. What happens if you eat the chips? Uh, I, you know, I've never tried to eat the chips. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was hoping for... Usually that guy drops an item, so we're going to have to kill some stuff in here until we see it. There we go. And we get way too many of them. Hmm. <laughs> Because I need my full 150 chip count uh, because we're going to do our first shopping of the game. So we're going to go in here. There's going to be a little shop. We buy one item. The other two disappear. And we're out. And so now you notice my chip count is zero. I have no, no sub-weapon for the next corridor to start. And my shot is weak. 
it's one of two places in the game where we're in this situation. You're a little vulnerable. A little vulnerable. And of course we're going to get hit by that. So this is Corridor 2. To open it, we're going to touch the corners. And when you're playing this game casually, there's like a hint system that tells you, I guess, unless you just want to beat your head against the door trying to get into the Yeah, it'll corridors. help you a little bit, but it's still, still tricky. I know, I know when I played this when I was a kid, I did not get very far. So, okay. Getting a little beat up here. I got way too many drops in that room back there, and now I'm way off pattern. So we're gonna have to be a little careful until we find a chip. I'd say take your time, but it's an auto scroller. And not really much I can do about that. <laughs> There's the right chip. Okay, so we're back at the beginning of the rotation now. You're looking pretty healthy now. Yeah, we're in good shape. I don't know about pattern-wise, but you definitely are back to full health and full yeah, chip count, I mean, so that's good. At this point in the game, it really doesn't matter too much. Um, there's a couple of places definitely later in the game where I'm trying to manipulate the drops I get to get optimal ones at the right time. Unfortunately, this early in the game, again, with as many items as this game drops, like, unless I really mess up, I'm not too worried. Let's go ahead and clear these up. Uh, this boss is going to be the Crawdaddy. That is not a fan <laughs> name. That is the actual name of the, the boss. He pinch. <laughs> yeah. Gone. You got a key. I got a key. Yeah, so keys. Um, you'll notice on some of the doors in this game, and I'll wait until I shoot one, like that one right there has the moon on it, so you need the moon key to go through that gate. Um, so keys are basically the system that keep you from accessing certain parts of the labyrinth until the game wants you to. So go ahead and fight a blue walker here real quick. This will be a fast one. Oh! Unless I... Whoa, okay. Well, I got a little greedy there, and now I'm in trouble. There we go. Good job. Okay. Good recovery. And another death abuse because we're done with this section. And that was the wrong direction. You just had a uh, near death experience before your actual <laughs> death experience, so these things happen. I do definitely get turned around sometimes, still. I mean, it is a maze. It is a maze. <laughs> so now we're in the forest biome. But all right, we'll deal. Like the location of the spawn? Yeah. Didn't really like where that was, but it worked out. So we just picked up a red lander there. So the red lander increased my max chip count. 
Um, and it also restored all my health and chips to full. There are nine of those in this run. And they're, they're friends. They are friends. You found a friend. So I love, I love this part. So for those of you, if you can hear kind of that hi-hat symbol in the music, that So the NES only has five sound channels to work with, and there's really only one of them that's used for percussion. Um, so if you listen close as enemies are blowing up, that kind of hi-hat sound goes away. Because it's on the same sound channel as that percussion hit, and the enemies blowing up has a higher sound priority. So it's just kind of one of those interesting little nerd facts about old school gaming. That three-shot three primary weapon looks really solid. Yeah, it's a little wider. Like, when I got that last red ship, it got a little wider than the one I had previous. Yeah. Did you have a announcement, Bundy? I actually have a couple donations, if you have the time. Yeah, go for it. Someone had earlier in chat asked, asked uh, where, the, where they could donate, and that's exclamation point, donate in chat. And, they, and I told them, hey, why don't you donate something fun for me? So... Firebird love over five dollars that says something fun. You're welcome. <laughs> and then they have an anonymous fifty dollar donation that says from your Seattle crew. Right. Uh, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And speaking of additions, don't forget that for our next run at Fuga, Melodies of Steel, we have a couple bid wars coming up. Right now, the costume choice, there's $20 for the Samurai Tower attire and nothing for school uniforms. So lots of time to get that switched. And then the language bid war with 28 for Japanese and 0 for French. So you still have plenty of time in this run to influence those bid wars. All right. It's, uh, it's very interesting that... Um... That game just happened to perfectly line up with our foreign language restreams. I, I think we need to get a donation bid war going. Uh, hopefully Baguette Restream is live right now. If not, I'm sure there's some of the French folks uh, who are watching who would love to um, donate for that. And Japanese Restream, I'm sure, will match you every step of the way. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, so we just went into Corridor 3 here. Um, corridor 3, to get the door to open, you just have to stand in the room for 20 seconds. It's pretty obnoxious. It was a perfect time to talk about Bid Wars. It was a perfect time to talk about Bid Wars. I know you're going to have to focus on this boss, too, when we get there. So yeah. I, might be a little bit of quiet time here for everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do the aggressive strat once. We'll see how it goes. Okay. I'm pretty solid when I'm at home. Less, less solid when I'm doing this in front of an audience. You got this. And if it doesn't work, it's three and a half minutes and you guys get to see this entire corridor again, which is this lovely shade of green. I'm sure we'll find something <laughs> to do to pass the time. I will say, though, for, for everybody who's watching, because we do have a little bit of time here while Twelve is getting through the corridor, um, if he can pull this off, it's incredibly cool. Um, it, it looks really neat. You'll be able to kind of tell what he's doing. Um, as he's doing it, and if it works, it's the the, the precision that he's going to have to uh, display to pull it off is, is pretty remarkable. So it's definitely like a, the pop off moment of the run, I would say, if it happens. Yeah. So we're all we're all rooting for you.
All right, good All right. luck. Good luck, you got this. So I'm lining myself up to a very specific spot here. Nice job. Good backup. All right. That was that was impressive. So what Tuala was trying to do at the beginning of that fight there is got the, like that laser cutter weapon. I mean, he was basically just trying to match the boss's movement pattern, which it's not it's the precision required for that is, is so precise because yeah. it's just back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, you just have to practice, practice. And you were you hung in there for a long time. Yeah. And if um, I if I change my vertical position too much, even then, like it's that's another thing that just kills it. So yeah. Yep. And then um, to to switch to the backup strat when you did and execute it pretty much perfectly, I think you got hit once. That was really nice as well. So good job. Thanks. Yep. Definitely gonna call that first try. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, so while we're coming down from that, we're just uh, headed over to uh, the next set of corridors here. Um, not much to do in the meantime other than kind of just walk through the maze. I don't know if we had any more donations or announcements or anything at this point. Well, let's see. You mentioned our alt language restream, so let's shout them out. It's being restreamed in Japanese by our friends at Japanese Restream to find their, stu their stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. We worked with them several times now. We're grateful for all the work they do in bringing our marathons to a larger audience. And don't forget that we are... The, the Mid Spring Speed Fling 2022 is a hybrid marathon with the on site portion taking place at VGM Con Liftoff in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Every April, VGM Con hosts a celebration of video games and music, including live music performances, open jam spaces, panels hosted by industry professionals, open gaming, indie developer showcases, and more. Midwest Speed Fest would like to thank VGM Con for, for their support and generosity in helping us put on our event. Learn more about them, visit vgmcon.org, and they would be proud of the music in this game and that little bit of that factoid you gave us earlier about the uh, NAS audio channels. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, when we got in last night, I saw him setting up the stages for the VGM Con concerts, and I'm legitimately excited to go check some of those out once yeah, they get started really later ones. today. I, uh, unfortunately, I've been out here all week, and so I have to go home tomorrow. And I, I found out, like, right before I got here that Knights of the Round was going to be playing, and I'm really upset I'm going to be missing that show. All well, hopefully it'll be streamed. I don't know. I don't know if they're streaming the live concerts or if uh, it's more panels and stuff, but BGM Con always puts on a really good show. So these discs now not quite the threat they were in the first stage. Those are terrifying. <laughs> like straight out of Contra, it's all good. <laughs> it sounds like it should be a t-shirt. <laughs> it's my next band album. Nice. So that was Clawbot, the first one. We're going to see those. 
Not too difficult, and ironically, probably the hardest, even though he was the blue one. Uh, so in this game, enemies are mostly color-coded. Uh, the cooler the color, like the blues and greens are the easy ones, the orange and reds are the tougher ones. That was a nice boss to come down from the previous corridor, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so coming up here, we're going to do one of the few, like, actual kind of bugs, glitches, whatever you want to call it in the game. Uh, when you go into a shop, you're only supposed to be able to buy one thing. But we're going to go in here, and we're going to buy two things. And then to open corridor four, we have to go in and out of this room four times. So you see a little shopkeeper there. You know, any luck, and then we go in here a fourth time. And he's like, oh, you're trying so hard, I'll open Corridor 4 for you. And you sweet thing, you. So we're going to come in here, and the door opens. So how do you execute the glitch where you can buy two items? Um, so when you walk into the shop, it's kind of like the hold select, except I hold start instead. Okay. Um... And there's some technicalities to it that I haven't fully figured out. I don't quite understand. Um, but from, you know, when I was learning this game and I was like, oh, I'll buy the item on the left or on the right first, uh, it doesn't seem to work that way. It seems like you have to buy the items in order from left to right for it to work, but I'm not 100% positive on that. Okay. Um, and there's, there's a lot of speculation that it's not so much a bug. It's kind of one of those little developer shortcuts that then they never just took out of the game. Does it work in every shop or just that one? Um, I think there's a few shops where it doesn't work. Um, okay. There's also several shops on the run where we just, we don't need to buy two things in there so we don't care. Okay. Alright, uh, so this is, this boss is Terramute. This is the only time in the entire run we're going to see it. Only one dragon. What kind oh. of, uh... I know, right? They really, they really, uh, missed an opportunity there. Especially given some of the other bosses we see twice, I would much rather that one. <laughs> Alright, so I'm a little... tend to come out of that fight a little low on health. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use another little kind of glitch trick here to refill it. So we're going to go down here. So I'm going to shoot this. And if you go diagonally into those things, uh, you don't collect it, or you rather you collect it over and over and over without it disappearing, so you just refill your health. Wow. And that is it for this section, so another death warp. In terms of the number of corridors, too, you're about halfway done now, right? Um, because you're it. Yeah, you've done all all of them, one through four. Yeah, so probably after this section would be more like halfway through, but yeah. Okay. One interesting thing I enjoy about this game, or um, is the the maze aspect. And one thing I noticed uh, when you were practicing this week is it actually has an X and Y coordinate yeah. um, down there. I think stuff like that to me stuck out a little bit, just because um, this game was published by uh, Broder uh, Broderbond. Broderbond. Yeah, and so like little educational. Uh, tidbits and stuff like that always reminds me of playing like uh where in the world is carmen san diego yep. back when i was a kid so yep broderbund with carmen san diego they were prince of persia yep. um they were uh there was another really famous game series they did i can't remember um but my favorite one is always if you uh if you remember printing out birthday banners on your parents dot matrix printer uh you use print shop pro and that was broderbund uh 
Or maybe maybe it was your dot matrix printer. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> let's let's not date ourselves too too harshly well, here. <laughs> hey, you never know. Games are for everybody. It's true. I bet we could. Uh, I bet we could find a dot matrix printer here at BGM Con somewhere <laughs> and print out something on Paint Shop Pro. It's probably used as an instrument. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. True facts. Also, the uh, last series you're thinking of was Mist. Yes. Thank you. That's a pretty famous one, I hear. Yeah. But you will get smarter playing this game. Uh, <laughs> it's scientifically proven. Because <laughs> it has math. Huh? This is the first uh, crystal biome yep. uh, corridor that you've been in as well. And for whatever reason, this one always reminds me of... It's like a mock-up of Earthbound. Like, you have the pencil-looking things and then the lumen wall behind it. I don't know. I can totally see that. It's probably just salt. At a certain point, you kind of outpace the enemies a little bit, too, with your, your, like, armor and weapons for a lot. Yeah, like like I said, the beginning of the game isn't too bad. Yeah. Uh, we're kind of approaching the point where it gets dicier. Yeah, but there's, like, this soft middle where it's just, like, you go through a couple stages and it's like, yeah, these aren't too bad. Yeah. But, yeah, it definitely ramps up again towards the end, like you were saying. Also, I feel like this game pairs very nicely with Metroid, um, and so it was it was neat to uh, have you right after that Metroid that excellent Metroid Prime uh, two run by uh, Bash to start things off today. Sure. Calling me and that is super distracting. <laughs> Do you want me to answer it live on stream? Uh, could we not? <laughs> it's probably just spam. That's all I get. Tuala, it's your mother. <laughs> We're calling about your car's extended warranty. I'm watching you on the Midwest <laughs> Speed Fest. Oh, my mom doesn't sound like that. Oh, I know. I just... <laughs> no. So we're going to trap this guy up here so that he can't chase us. I was just going for, like, generic nagging. Yeah, mom. no, I gotcha, I gotcha. So this corridor, we have to shoot the corridor header. <laughs> Puzzles. Puzzles. There's a lot of Zelda 1 in this game, though. There is. And the music in the, uh, the corridor music in these crystal sections especially reminds me of the uh, temple music from Zelda 2 a lot. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I can hear it. It's got that same kind of syncopated drum beat to it. When I uh, when I did this for Fastest Furs a few months ago, that was right after you finished your Zelda 2 run. Oh boy! Yeah, bringing back memory. It wasn't so much of a run as it was a uh, <laughs> brutal struggle <laughs> against the uh, Elder Gaming Gods. That, that game just, is hard. That just sounds like playing Zelda 2 to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And that was when Blaze stopped doing game requests. So. <laughs> I got you to play Ori, that's all I care about. Yeah. So 
So what's nice there, for a speedrunning fact, is we did not hit 500,000 points before we beat that guy. Uh, 500,000 points, I gain a level up, which refills my life and also fills up my health bar. Um, but we're about to do a death abuse, and so we want our health as low as possible before we go into that. A little bit of uh, micro-optimization yep. there. Did you just get killed by ice cubes? I did. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Self-replicating ice cubes. Mm -hmm. Need those at my next party. <laughs> Someone just left the ice machine on. <laughs> or they walked outside two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was a cold week. Uh, so Corridor 6, you just have to fire your secondary weapon long enough for your uh, chip count to decrease. Uh, so the way that works in this game, um, if you have a weapon that just continually fires like this, uh, your chip count just goes down every 60 frames um, or every second. This game, for an S game, uh, runs at a pretty consistent 60 frames a second um, all throughout the game. So, uh, yeah, continuous fire weapons just decrease your chip count every 60 frames. Um, Weapons like the fireball that are one shot just decrease it every time you hit it. Yeah, this I know this game does lag at certain points, but for these these games are notorious for lag spikes, and yeah, it really hasn't done that at all so far. No, and like there's there's definitely times where there's a lot of sprites on the screen where you'd normally see that, but yeah, they did a really good job with this one. And this level is definitely the one that does lag. These volcanoes will just spew these rocks endlessly until you kill them. So this is why I'm just, like, this level you're just trying to stay at the top of the screen as much as you possibly can. I just saw a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that kind of screen lag, speed, speedrunners hate that kind of oh. stuff. It's the worst. Uh, so this is another one-time boss. We only see this one once. This is the glider. And it is only vulnerable when it stops to fire. So we just gotta wait for it to do its thing. <laughs> nice job. Is it a set pattern or is there RNG for No, that? it's a very set pattern. Okay. So I know exactly where it's gonna be. At least for the first three stops and it's never lasted longer than that. <laughs> right along here. Yep. Um, so I haven't really stopped to show or talk about it much. Um, there's a lot of sub-weapons in this game. I'm going to do another shot glitch real quick. Grab a Red Lander and a Grenade upgrade. Um, we really only used three of them in this run. Oh, I don't want that yet. Um, so we used the Saber, uh, which is this. The Cutter, which is that double-bladed one come out of the sides. Um, and the Fireball. Um, but there are, you can see there's a bunch more here. Um, the blue ones are the ones I have at level one, the green ones are level two, the purple ones are level three, and the enemy eraser there on the bottom row. Um, so like I said, part of this run is getting all those up to level three. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Those crab bosses are safe as long as you stand directly to the right of them. They'll never hit you. This track is amazing, by the way. <laughs> All right. There we go. 
And now we are in the bio biome. Would you say we're... No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too gross for this uh, stream. These enemies are fun. Yeah, so those little green guys will absorb all, all weapon fire, no matter what it is. Uh, so to kill them, you just fly up to them and boop them. Your ship has a snoot, <laughs> and you boop them with it. Oasis when you need them. Right. Hopefully watching. This is a work day though. So this is the eyeball growth. I'm gonna see two of these. And classic speedrun strat of just stand there and shoot the boss. I mean, they didn't move. <laughs> So, after this boss, note my run speed right now, kind of get an idea of how fast I'm going. Uh, we're going to pick up another defensive upgrade, and after we pick this one up, our run speed is going to increase Ooh. dramatically. Very nice. I think it's after the third defense, fourth defense upgrade you pick up, your speed increases. I kind of lost track, but it's a nice little boost for the rest of the game. Uh, so now we're at in and out <laughs> uh, To open this door, we just go in and out four times. I think you're supposed to order it animal style too, right? Yeah, okay. that's how it goes. Okay. So I've always been told. <laughs> it, it didn't help, honestly, but I don't want to get into a fight with... Uh, <laughs> anyone from the West Coast here at Midwest Speed Fest. Uh, so this is the first place in the game we're going to use the enemy eraser, and you'll see it's very aptly named. Okay. Enemies be gone. Yeah. So it doesn't work on quite everything, but just about. The, uh, the lasers that these ships drop are one of the most dangerous things in the game. Right. Hide strats. Just sit in the corner. Yep. Let's get like some eye emojis in the chat for those <laughs> eyeballs. They're trying. All right, now we have the second and final eyeball growth. Hey, cut that out. 
No, it works out because we're gonna do a death skip anyway. So. Okay. It just seemed excessively rude. Right? <laughs> Alright, so we skipped Corridor 16 a little bit earlier because we have to pass it again and we're more powerful now. Going out of order, what is this, a speedrun? Oh. So we're back in the Crystal Biome briefly. We got some time for some uh, donations or anything, if there's any. Oh, it just so happens we've got one. I have $11 from non-binary code that says, I don't have the influence to start a $1 team. So let's buy 11 tickets for myself. Lots of room to stretch out. But like, if anyone else would like to join me, it's a very nice train. This train is bound for trans rights, this train. Let's get that train going for sure. Yes. Doo -doo. This might be a just a really quick time just to because I don't want to steal your thunder at the end of the run to all but I do just want to say that I'm incredibly proud of you for learning to speedrun and specifically learning to speedrun so you could um, participate in marathons like this that are helping charities and uh, you've done a lot for our fastest furs group that we do our charity marathons and you know to, to come out and be a part of Midwest Speed Fest and do it in person is really cool as well so Thank you. you deserve a lot of credit and to anybody who has a game that they just love and they want to help, uh, they want to help support good causes. Uh, Speedrun marathons are a perfect way to do that. Whether you're a streamer, whether you just like to play them on the side and watch, watch speedrun events like this, um, nothing is stopping you, yeah. and you will be able to find some way to help. So, if you, it's really cool. If you're a speedrunner yourself and like to participate in one of our marathons, we'd certainly love to have you. Runners from all across the globe are encouraged to submit to all of our to our online events. And if you're willing to come on into Minneapolis, Minnesota, take in take in part of our on-site events as well, we'd love to have you. For more information, join our Discord server by typing exclamation point Discord in the chat and following the link. Awesome. So yeah, we had uh we had Red Optimum right there. You can see we've gotten a lot more powerful. He was no problem. Uh, now we're in the section of a thousand warps. Um, we're right back at the beginning of the game. So this is an area you're supposed to find pretty early. It just teaches you how buying things in this game works. <laughs> um, Money can be exchanged for goods and services. Yeah. <laughs> So this is Corridor 8. To open Corridor 8, you use your sub-weapon button with no sub-weapon equipped. Uh, and this is probably the scariest corridor in the game, so I'm going to kind of focus through here.
All right, I'm in pretty good shape right now. Uh, this is still a pretty tricky boss. This is Grim Grim. Hi! So I'm basically just trying to follow his movement pattern here. But it is a long fight. This is also probably one of the grosser bosses. Which is odd to say after eyeball growth. Twelve is also ducking out of the boss movement patterns from time to time to pick up those drops and then get back into the pattern, which is just... Again, the, it's taking a lot of concentration, so... And you can just tell how long this boss fight is, too. It's still not done. Just about gone. There we go. Nicely done. Whew. I know that was the other boss you were worried about, so yeah, good job. Yeah. Something something bullet sponge. Right? Yeah. Hey, shout outs to all the other uh, bullet heck uh, speedrunners and uh, folks out there that are playing games like this in marathons now too. These are very difficult games to uh, master. I think we got some Toho coming up later on in the weekend. If I'm forgetting anything else, uh, I'm sure someone will remind us at some point. Oh, that was an odd jump. Uh, not liking this. Die, please. Dang. Ah. Uh, that was a weird pattern, but okay. Of all the places I could die, that's... I'll take that one. That's that's very short time loss, yeah. Yeah, usually he doesn't bounce, like, right into you like that and just stay there. That was... odd. All right, take two. You got this. That's more like it. You just got stuck on your head for some reason. I know. That was very strange. Dare we say that's never happened before? Uh, you know, I think that has never happened before. <laughs> He said it! He <laughs> said the line! He did the thing! <laughs> Alright, so we're walking to Corridor 18 right now. Yep. Not a whole lot left there, and you were kind of picked up another lander there to meet that requirement for the 100%, so... One fun thing, and it's it's difficult to pick up on him as you're watching, especially if you're not, uh... Whoa. Okay, now that has definitely never happened before. <laughs> um, the, um... The game the, always knows when you're in a marathon, by Yeah, the way. right? Yeah. Um, so you'll see kind of how I'm standing back here. Like, there's a little bit of a gap in my shots. Like, they're not super hyper fast. Now watch what happens real quick if I do this. So if you can see the difference, um, and this is another one of those those little old NES facts and how they code these games, um, but there's four memory slots in this game dedicated to your weapons. Um, and if you have no sub-weapon equipped, all four of them go to your primary shot. Um, Even if you're not firing the sub-weapon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. So it all that matters is if you have it equipped. Oh, um, so okay. if you have no sub-weapon equipped, all four memory slots go to your primary shot. Um, so you can shoot four of them at a time, basically. Um, most of the other sub-weapons take up one memory slot. So when you have one of them equipped, 
Um, you have three memory slots for your primary weapon. You can basically shoot that three times before it resets. The cutter takes up two memory slots, or what we're using now. Um, and so that makes your primary weapon really slow because it's only firing at about half rate. That's so weird. But it makes sense. Yeah. There's a... Uh, if you, if you ever wanted to know kind of like what's going on behind the scenes of certain NES games, there's a uh, YouTube series out there called Behind the Code. Um, and the guy does a pretty good job of explaining things, even if you're not used to assembly or programming in general. Uh, definitely check it out and watch it because it's, yeah, it's fascinating, uh, the way they code these things and the tricks they use and all that stuff. But, yeah. Here, we're gonna do another death warp. So we're getting pretty close to the end now. We got four more corridors. Nice. Another little mini shopping trip here. A little more expensive than the last one, but we can afford it. Been saving our chips. Making the big bucks now. <laughs> okay. So this is a, kind of a fairly long walk, if I recall. Uh, no, this one is short. Oh, maybe it's the next one. So, fun little trick here coming up to your level two fireball is the same as your speed is in same as, let me try that again. Your level two fireball fire speed is the same as your increased walking speed. Uh, so if you fire it while you're walking, it acts as kind of a shield. Hmm. Uh, so we use it through that section just to kind of get past through all those volleyball looking things. This is the point in the game where the corridors definitely start getting pretty deadly if you're not careful. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Yeah. A lot of this section of the game is knowing how much things hurt when they hit you so you know what you can run into and what you really have to avoid. Sure. I imagine there's like an optimal number of cycles to get through that guy. Yeah. The disappearing act. That one felt a little slow. I think I've usually done it one or two faster, but I've never really counted. Okay. So that was a defense upgrade we just picked up, so now my shields are a little stronger. Excellent. 
<laughs> I wonder if you're supposed to go that way. Small hints. Uh, so corridor nine, the only one, and one through ten that we don't have to do anything to open. It just greets us, which is about as ominous as it sounds. Yeah, it's like if I was me and I didn't have to enter a puzzle, being there like, um, what's the catch? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome into Allo. <laughs> the catch is there's a lot of things trying to kill you. <laughs> Not terribly different from the rest of the game. So this is, this is probably the first level in the game where I'm going to do some uh, drop manipulation, or at least make sure I know where I am when I get to the boss. Um, so a little bit later in the level you'll see me, or you'll kind of hear me keeping track of, of what's dropping. Right here. So heart, red chip, and it's going to be blue, oh, red chip. Okay, so red chip, that was a blue chip I missed. Oh, no. Okay, red chip, heart, right. Now I know where I are. So that'll be a heart. Yeah. We talked about this pretty early on in the run, but for anybody who tuned in late, there's like a 12, it, it's a 12 item cycle. Eight. Oh, eight, okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm where I want to be. I had to think about it for a sec. Because it's going to be a blue chip and two hearts. And that should be good. That should get me through the boss. Yep. We're in good shape. Woo! That looked a I've to to yeah. the uh, untrained eye that looked a little scary at the end there. Uh, it was a little close. <laughs> That's one of those where you just kind of, after you do it enough times, you understand, like, okay, I picked up the drops I need, I'll make it. Yeah. That mini boss looked very unpleasant. Yeah. So you see me a lot of times um, using myself to damage enemies. Um, you damage enemies as you hit them in this game. You basically reflect damage back onto them. Uh, so body checking enemies is obviously a way to go faster, but you're losing health while you do it. It's a trade off. It is a trade off. Yep. Getting down to the end here, yep. a couple corridors, and then the the boss rush escape. Yep. So final upgrade right there. That should be every weapon at level three. Yep. See, there you go. All purple across very, the board. Very purple. Of course, I wanted to actually do that while I was there. Bounce around. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that was. Got dicey there for a second. Like I said, the lasers from those little ships hurt a lot. <laughs> here for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing in this game, oh, I really wanted that tank, but whatever. Um, so your health in this game isn't really your health, it's your shields. Um, and so you'll see, you know, as it drops, if it ever gets to zero, um, no matter how, like, as long as you don't get hit at zero, you don't die. So if I have, you know, one health unit left and I get hit by something that does five, it'll still just take me to zero. Um, mm -hmm. It basically depletes my shield and then the next hit will kill me. Um, and one thing that happens in this game, we call it the zero health hitbox. Um, your hitbox while you have shields is a little bit larger to kind of simulate having a shield. Um, and then when you're at zero, it becomes much, much smaller, which is great for dodging enemies, uh, not so great for picking up items because it is also smaller for that. Ooh. So you'll fly right over something and swear you picked it up and there it goes right behind you. They're sticky shields. Yeah. They have gr they're grabby. So this is the long run through the maze. Uh, it's pretty easy because every room has one way in and one way out. You can't get lost. It just takes a long time to get through this section. So if we have any donations, now is a great time. Unfortunately, none to be seen. But we'll talk about our charity, Save the Music. Save the Music partners with public school districts and communities across the United States and to show that it that showed immediate need for support and resources to jumpstart and enhance their music education programs. These districts often serve Title I schools, which have a high percentage of students qualifying for free and or reduced lunch, and, and, and own a limited instrument inventory and materials prior to Save the Music's partnership. Their partner districts are committed to investing in and building in-school educa music education programs for the benefit of student achievement and access to well-rounded education. I'm just going to quickly plug my own run, which is coming up next, and just mention that both of those bid wars are going to be open, or they're going to close right at the beginning of the run. So if anybody wanted to donate for either of those, uh, you don't have a lot of time left. And I suggest getting them in. They're real easy to swing. The Samurai Attire is leading school uniform for costume choice by just $20. Okay. And then Japanese versus French in the, the, the language bid war. 28 for Japanese, zero for French, so you can switch that real easy. So I'm just going to mention my personal positions on those two bid wars really quick. Um, I prefer the school uniform, so I would love to see that one flip. Um, if you want to make me annoyed, you could donate for French, because I definitely prefer the Japanese uh, voice voice acting. Um, they're both really cute. It's just uh, the Japanese, I don't know. It's To me, it's a little bit more canon. Um, but there's actually really funny quips in both of them for the for the characters. So, so you got one chance to make me happy and one chance to make me uh, annoyed. If you if you would like to speak with your dollars for save the music. Okay, so we're gonna hit ludicrous speed here for a couple of minutes. Go. <laughs> And hit the tanks. <laughs> Is there any explanation for why you start going faster like that? Because the game wants you to. Okay. They're having a competition for how many skulls they can fit in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Igor again. Uh, much easier Igor this time. Um, not sure why this boss is called Igor and not the one whose eyes you literally shoot out, but... We're, uh, we're much more powerful now, so we can just stand right beneath them and fire away. Alright, 
So that's the last official corridor. Yep, corridor 10. We have unlocked the path to the self-destruct sequence. So we're going to do one more death abuse. Hopefully the last time we die this run. Just a quick jaunt to the self-destruct button, really. All right. <laughs> and this room, it's like right at the beginning of... It's right at the beginning of the game, so... But if you go in there before you beat quarters 1 through 10, it's just an empty room. You have no idea what's going on. Um, so I'm already starting to do a little bit of drop manipulation for the final battle. Um, I'm trying to kill as few of these rocks as I can. And that should put me right about where I want to be when I get to the last boss. We're going to see some familiar faces yeah. uh, in the boss rush section here. But not all of them. I guess... Uh, no, they are all repeats. Oh, I so even the ones that only show up once... I guess what I meant is, like, or not all the bosses oh, are in yeah, the boss yeah, yeah. rush. No, yeah, yeah. I, I got you now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. They only had limited slots in the boss rush, I guess. Right, right. You got to RSVP for the boss <laughs> rush. Kind of ugly. I'm going to die. Yep. Okay. All right, well. You got this. Yeah, that was fine. We're still plenty of time. Yeah. So how does that affect your cycle now? Uh, it doesn't, because when you die, it resets. Oh, so okay. So it's the same as if I had just come through here. Okay. I guess what? I, so you don't have to manipulate it. It's still, you're still happy with where it yep. is. Okay. I know exactly where I am. Get some positive uh, vibes for Tuolo here. There we Much go. Much better. Yeah. Okay, so now we got another Grim Grin. That's a blue, unfortunately.
Rocks, please. <laughs> Could you not? Now we're in good shape. Okay. Alright, good stuff. Uh, so that was blue chip, so next up we have heart heart. Okay. So I want to get two drops, and then I want to stop killing things. A little flashing warning here, sorry. <laughs> just didn't realize that was coming up. I always forget about it myself. Yeah. So there's one drop. Let's see if we can get one more, hopefully. Uh, not ideal, but okay. I could have cheesed it a little bit. There's sort of a, a trick you can use. Um, if you use the enemy eraser and you blow up an enemy, and then you just keep hitting it repeatedly, the explosion still counts as an enemy that you kill. Oh, okay. So you can just kind of keep cycling the drop counter, but I think yeah. I'm in okay shape. Okay. And just so the timer is aware, this is the final boss. Yeah. So time will be um, after I kill it, um, and then fly off the top of the screen. So this boss is just called It. We're gonna kill it with lasers. And the big thing you're watching for on this boss is those bubbles he shoots. Those are the things that really drain your health in this fight. Hey, Tuala, I have a question for you. What? Would you say this run is going really well? Uh, it's gone pretty well, yeah. Would you say you're killing it? Uh, God. <laughs> Yep, there's the orange. So in about five more seconds, he's gonna turn red. And now we got about seven seconds till he dies. Health's looking good. Yep. We are in good shape. And... Time. Nicely done. Great run. Oh. Yeah, so that is Guardian Legend. You are um, the greatest player. I am the greatest player. Yeah, the game has said so. <laughs> it has spoken. Um, yeah, like Blaze said, this is the first game I've ever speedrun. Um, I learned it specifically to participate in uh, Fastest Furs, the marathon he helps run. Um, it was a really fun game. It was actually, it was very intimidating to learn at first, but once you kind of get into it, uh, it's not that difficult. Um, so if you're interested in running this, um, you can check out the Discord, TGL Hype. Uh, there's a link to it from the speedrun.com page for this game. Uh, it's pretty quiet in there, but, you know, people are paying attention. And if you post in there, uh, you know, you get a response pretty quick. And people are always willing to help out and learn a game and just support you with your runs and stuff. Um, it's a nice little community. Um, but, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, let's all save the music.